Hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. We welcome back to the studio for the first time in many, many years. Oh. Many years. Many. The Tana Mojo. Woo! Hello. Woo! It has been so long. Yeah. 2019 like, was the last time. I remember going on your show for the first time. Like, I was so... Because that was the first time we met, I think. 100%. I didn't know and, you at all before that. Yeah, and I was so fucking excited. I was like, that was like... That felt like the ceiling of my career for me. Like, I was very much like, I'm going on Zach saying today, I can't believe this. Like, I was, oh my God, I was just losing my mind. I never thought we'd end up becoming, like, pretty good friends. Literally. I mean, I see you out all the time. We, we have, like, we run, like, our circles run very similarly. So, like, 100%. we see each other a lot. Constantly. I, I, yeah. I've watched more concerts with you in the last, like, year and a half. Than maybe anybody else. Honestly, you know, the other night when I saw you at Nessa, I was so excited to see you. I was like, yes, I just, it's like something about you feel safe. I'm like, I can just vibe out, talk my shit. No, by the way, mutual. You know that. Like, I you just that. gave me goosebumps. Like, you really, uh, you give safety. And I think with that, like, God's truth, and, and I'm so happy to have you here because since your our show in 2019, you go on to do a thousand trillion podcasts in a way that like would go on and showcase your personality and define you in a different light than anything else. Is that fair to say? Like whether it was H3 and what you're doing with Jeff, you do your own podcast, yeah. which is now gone, but now coming back. So much to talk about. But well, you have so, like you, I'm trying to put this into words. You have been the OG podcast, the OG interview, the like, you know what I mean? It's you, your show and interviewing people has been such a thing before the podcast world kind of blew up and became so oversaturated. And you know what I mean? That's true. And, it's weird um, to think and at the time when I went on your stuff, it, I wasn't in that podcasting <laughs> era. It wasn't a thing. You know what I mean? And now they're just everywhere. Every, I feel like my mailman has a podcast. You know? <laughs> and, and that's like, not. It, it, you're not joking. But you being on that couch, I don't know, dude, like, th your first appearance was really incredibly good, um, and uh, people got a chance to know you in a really different way. Mm -hmm. I think that time was just so, so different, and that, thinking about that interview and everything I probably said, I would go back and watch it now and be like, oh. God, this girl has a lot to learn. Well, and I thought I knew everything at that time. Well, because you know? you're also at, like, peak popularity at that moment, mm -hmm. right? Like, you are more viral than fucking ever. You're c either coming off of or going into marrying Jake Paul. Mm, I'm sitting down on your show. Like, it's, I'm so in love. Everything's so figured out. This is it. This is my path. Like, <laughs> no, I, oh, my God. I had so much adulting to do at that time and didn't even realize it. And now, when you look at where you're at... And there's been growth between 2019 and 2023. How would you describe your world today compared to your world back then? That's okay. Um, I think everything was just so different then. That was like the YouTube vlog, get views, move without thinking era. You know, I was just posting and doing and being so crazy. And, you know, I think you think at... 19, 20, and 21 and stuff, even 22, you have everything figured out. And I'm sure I'll look back at 24 and think I have everything figured out. You know what I mean? Like, think I thought I had everything figured out then. But I just, I thought I had everything fucking figured out. And so much ended up happening. I don't know. I had a lot of life to live. Well, and a lot, of, a lot of life to live and then a lot of change to go through. Mm -hmm. Because you go through, I mean, did you know in 2019 what you saw your career as no i don't think i'm bad at that still i think i always i'm just like i'm tana and i'm tannaing around and somehow it's on camera and it is what it is you know what i mean but looking back it's like that time was just so crazy and i don't think i knew it i think i was just doing it but i think had i known it i think that's a blessing and a curse you know like being hyper aware of what it was maybe would have been a bad thing for me at the time and i think i was just doing and living you know do you think you're able to build a foundation at least build a community or people who give a shit about you tanning enough <laughs> to kind of ride through the last i mean when i think about the last few years for you i think canceled mm -hmm. and then i think canceled being canceled mm -hmm. and then i think uh <laughs> dizzy d right yeah uh then i think uh tana weed yeah tanabis is coming tanabis is on the way yeah I think OnlyFans, correct? For sure. <laughs> I remember when you had your own little agency. Yeah, I still do. I just don't really go as hard Got with it. the promotion. Like, has there been focus? Have, like, yeah. have you figured out like what actually drives you and what you give a shit about? 
For sure. I think that if anything, at that time, I was so much more like, I'm down to do whatever, spread myself so thin. Like, you know, everything was just kind of a mess then. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to kind of hone in on what I'm passionate about and what I love doing and work on projects that I feel like will fulfill and stabilize my future that I love as well. I think I've finally gotten to the point now where I can like say no to shit and I'm not Mm -hmm. doing shit I don't want to do. And like, I'm not putting too much on my plate and I'm also running my own business. You know, at the time I was very much fully reliant on like my manager and fully reliant on just the people around me to help me and stuff. And now I've kind of just like become an adult and like do my shit on my own and know what I'm passionate about, I guess. And the reality is like, nobody's going to, nobody's going to look out for you like you. Right. And if you put, responsibility and trust in a bunch of other people's hands like Mm -hmm. you never know where you're gonna end up and I definitely just didn't know that you know what I mean Uh. I I definitely was just like yeah I was I was a wild child as well I think I had a couple more years of getting all that craziness and partying and learning about how to control that and manage that as well in my system you know you've been sober going on 75 days right yes I've been doing 75 hard um, which is, it's funny now. Cause normally when I see you out, Zach is, we're both wild and we're drunk and I'm like, yes. And I feel like the last like five times I've seen you, I'm like, Hey, I'm leaving in 20 <laughs> minutes. It's great to see you. Literally. Like, just like fucking, I can't do it anymore the way I used to. I mean, it's about to end and I'm going to have a little fun, but I feel great and I've been loving it. You know, what changes, like what, what, what? happens where you're like I I need to commit to this to prove yeah to prove something to yourself what is it for all of that I guess I mean I've done little like 30 day challenges a bunch I like to kind of take factors out of my life because I think it's very scary when you begin to feel dependent on anything Mm. to feel a certain way or even just when something becomes too comfortable you don't necessarily notice the patterns of things becoming too comfortable like drinking and partying and stuff like that and um I don't know. I just, I, the last couple months of this year were super crazy for me. I'm from Vegas, which has its pros, but it also has its cons. So when you go home for the holidays and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all that back to back, we were just wilding out in Vegas. And I think my last straw was this, the very beginning of this January, we went on like a very wild trip to Miami. And I'm sure you know how Miami treats you. Uh, <laughs> um, it is your best and your worst friend. It is so fun, but it is might be hell on earth, you know, like just the way you feel coming back and the actions, at least for me, that I have out there. <laughs> Would you regret? Um, nothing in specifics. My voice goes up 10 octaves. Like, nothing in specifics. Um, no, but it was just a wild, wild week. The whole, the yacht parties and the strip club. I think at one point we were in 11, the strip club, and I turned a page and she's like, Hey, let's go. And it's like 6 a.m. Wow. And I'm like, this strip club closes at 8 a.m. What do you mean? I'm <laughs> staying till 8 a.m. Whatever. And I come back and I just, I feel like fucking death. And I think that's the thing as well. Like 21, a hangover is like. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I definitely thought I was invincible in regards to that for so long. And I think I came back and I felt like I was on death row. And I was like, this is the perfect time to just, especially work-wise, I'm like so focused on Canceled is about to come back. Mazel um, tov. April 7th. I'm mm-hmm, so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tanabis. And I've been, I'm about to buy my first house because I put that off for so long. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I should have done it years ago. Like I just... But as I'm in this process, I see why I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's like such a fucking big, hard adult. Just all these things were kind of lining up. Big, hard adult decisions. And I was like, this is a really good time for me to lock in and be my best self. And I just feel super focused. And like my clarity is on 10. And I'm. that's why I'm not probably not going to come on here today and like air a bunch of people out and be psycho. Because it's like my brain's in a good spot, you know? Does any part of you want to keep the soberness going because you see how many good things came from it? (sighs) Yes. Like, I just said this in my most recent YouTube video. I was like, there's a part of me that would love for this to be my constant lifestyle. But it does, I will it, like, just straight up admit, like, I don't understand, at least for me. Like, shit's not fun. Mm -mm. (laughs) Like, it just, 
you know, nice niche moments are fun. This is fun, but it's not the same type of wild fun. And I've always been a very wild fun person. So I just genuinely feel like that part of life is missing. And it's, I was talking to Jeff about this the other day in the car and he's been sober for like five, six years type of thing. And he was like, I'm going to be so real with you. Like that never changes. Like I'll always just feel like I have less fun than I did now. So that's kind of a hard thing for me to stomach because. Yeah, that's really scary. Yeah, like I, seeing all my friends have like so much fun at shit. You know what I mean? Mm. And I'm just like, whew. Like I, I'm just, it, it makes me such a hermit, homebody, grandma, fucking, I want to take a bubble bath and read a book and it's embarrassing. <laughs> well, because your social life definitely, it changes. And you realize what you hate. You realize that people you don't want to fucking be around. You realize the things that are just not fun that you have to make fun in that regard. You know, like, let's say I have to go to the club for a birthday or an event. I'm, like, looking around at, like, the ceilings. I'm like, damn, this place is, like, kind of dingy. <laughs> like, you know, like, you don't realize all those type of things. So it's, like, I, I'm, I want to be able to try to find a balance in that. And I think that will be my journey. But who knows? When you, you take know? a trip to Miami, do you get paid? A lot of times, yeah. Sometimes, no. I mean, I, I fucking love Miami. There was a point where I wanted to, like, move there. Because um, as I am from Vegas, it, I always say it's like Vegas and L.A. had a baby on a beach. <laughs> and it's like, I love it there. So, I mean, I've made a lot of friends and connections out there and have done a lot of, like, brand work and different stuff. And sometimes I just go for fun. Jeff and I just went for Lele Pond's wedding. What? And that, But I went sober, which was crazy. Miami sober is like, I had new lenses on, bro. Like, I just never seen anything like it, especially the dichotomy of how it was in January for me right before I went sober versus how it just was. That is a full circle was, moment. You should be yeah. proud of yourself, though. That's that's the thing is I, I'll never not want to still kind of do the things I do, so I've done, like, Cabo sober on this journey. <laughs> Talk about darkness Cabo sober like that it's just there you land and they're giving you tequila shots you know and they like haze you out there that's like their job at the restaurants if you say no they're like no no take it you know and Ooh. I was like oh my god like whole nine so I've, I've still been trying to do things but it's it's interesting for sure what's your biggest source of revenue my biggest source of revenue yeah how do you make money um I mean I have a lot of different things that are kind of competing but I guess only fans of my agency are up there. Um, we just started taking on new clients again, and I have so much fucking fun with that and, like, helping people. And yeah. that's, like, a big part of my life right now. And obviously Dizzy is and was doing very great. Brand deals, I guess, are really up there, I, I, which is probably surprising coming out of my mouth because I'm so non-brand safe. So it's, like, it's maybe not a big bag from, like, Coca-Cola, but it's, like, a big bag from, like, a sex toy brand or something. Whatever. Like, you know, a bag is a bag. A bag is a bag, you know what I'm saying? I probably won't be in the Amazon studios for <laughs> anything I'm doing, but, uh, you know. Um, and just, I, I'm a side hustle girl as well. Just, like, the other random stuff, investments and different things I do. And, yeah, appearances touring stuff like that i'm gonna tour i know brooke and i want to tour canceled really heavily this year and i think that'll be a good source of revenue and so fun you're like rich rich <laughs> it's funny because i i am and i'm bad about this and i talk about it but i'm so comparison oriented yeah like no matter how much money i make i wake up every day like you are a failure <laughs> yeah, but who are you comparing yourself to i don't even know it's just, it's always random. I think today I saw, like, Logan Paul and KSI became the sponsor mm -hmm. for, like, Prime became the sponsor for the Dodgers or something. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I need to work harder. And then it's like, Tana, but you're not KSI. <laughs> like, you're Tana Mojo. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it doesn't even make sense to compare. You know what I mean? You're doing but your I own just, thing. I always will, you know? Like, I always want to make more, do more, work harder type of thing. So, okay. Is it hard to have proper friends when you're rich? I'm, I mean, you know when you see me, at least, I'm very lucky to have the same friends I've always had. Truth. I'll always be scared of a bitch who has a new fucking set of best friends every couple months. That is, like, red flag waving in the sky. It scares the shit out of me, you know? And I, I moved out here with Amari and Ashley, and they've been by my side, and Isabella and all my friends are, my best, Ari, all my best yeah. friends are from Vegas, and people I know that loved me when I had nothing, and... Hunter even, like, I just, I'm really lucky to kind of keep the same best friends who I knew have loved me at my lows and when I had nothing. And 
I mean, I'm definitely a, like, I'm sure you can attest to this, pretty guarded now, like oh, yeah. just with new friends and stuff. I, I love a fun new friend, but I'm like, you love me now. Like if I'm in my worst scandal, do you love and rep me the same way? If totally. I fucking went under tomorrow, would you love and rep me the same way? If, but also who the fuck know? are you? Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know you. Exactly. I don't know you for a fucking hole in the wall. And what are your motives? Why are you here? One hundred percent. And I'm just, I'm so like, like that. Especially with, my friends are a little more accepting, and they'll bring new people in, and you'll just see me in the corner, like scanning the new person at the house for like an hour, like. And I'm not a bitch about it. I just. No, you, 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 these are the right types of feelings and concerns one should have when a new person just stumbles into the group for sure and i've been doing this shit for like eight years so i've seen every person mm -hmm. try to expose me or get something out of my world or be shady shysty fake like i've seen it all so much that i feel like my radars are pretty good now you know does that partially fuel why you try to get ahead of things like that you may be involved in like you're kind of forward and, and transparent Definitely very forward. I think that's just how I've always been. Like, I just say what's on my mind, which definitely bites me in the ass. Mm -hmm. But I do kind of live with a, like, sense of paranoia. Like, at all times of people's intentions and, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what people are doing and what people are posting and what how the internet's going to perceive that and stuff. Like, I've learned to balance that. You know, there are times in my life, like, write post out of a scandal where I'm, like, fucking paranoid as hell about everything and that's not a way to live that's a shitty way to live you know so i balance it now but i i would venture to say i'm a pretty like paranoid aware person do you see yourself as scandalous um as of late i mean i can't even lie and say no though i'll still say some shit on a podcast where like an hour later i'm like why the fuck would i say that you know what i mean like i i don't look at it as scandalous like i'm not but then again, at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> maybe I am just scandalous. A lot of it to me in my head is just like, I am I just say what's on my mind and it bites me in the ass sometimes or I'll say the truth about people and some people don't like the truth and that can be pretty scandalous um, within itself. But then I am just scandalous sometimes, like flashing my tits on some shit or doing some crazy <laughs> shit, you know? I don't know. Did yeah, you have to pick a side in the David Dobrik Jeff thing? Have to is... Well, you did kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to use the narrative of have to because that kind of seems like someone's like gun to my head, like you have to pick this side, and that's not how it was. Um, it was a very interesting thing for me to navigate, I think, because um, I'd known David for a very, very long time, and that is how you would say I met Jeff was through David, you know. And David did a lot for me and my career, and putting me in videos, and even just like taking the time to be in mine and inviting me to things and was always very nice and welcoming to me and my friends in the regard of his events and the things that he does and his sending me stuff and made me feel very included and stuff like that. And I never want to negate that, but you, you, you can see though that it was transactional, right? 100%. And I think, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of what this industry is. And I think that, you can have a nice friendship with someone and be aware that it is kind of transactional. Like, we're probably not going to have, like, a movie night and kick it and giggle. Like, it's probably going to be for the internet, you know. But I can look back and be grateful for that time and those moments and stuff. But I think that as I got to know Jeff um, and a lot more about the whole situation, you know. Like, I we I saw everything that happened online. We all did. Um, but you don't really know the mental effects of that or the d really dark parts as well, just things that never made it to the internet in those situations until you have the privilege of getting close to someone. And as I got closer and closer to Jeff, it just, I think it is one of those situations where you can't be best friends with Jeff and feel right about being close friends with David yeah. or be best friends with David. And I guess his friends, you know, they don't want to, it's kind of, you know, they're in court. Like it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's real. a battle for yeah. sure. It's, it, and it's, it's a very real thing. Rightfully and, so though, because a man's life was put at, at, at stake and yeah. his mental health, the future of his health is still yeah. in jeopardy. And it's so in jeopardy. And that's the thing that I don't think I realized for a long time or people realize even now, like, after sitting beside, like, Jeff's side while he had just gotten his 11th eye surgery and you 
when you love someone so much and care about them so much and you see their spirit just like sucked out of their body like just and Jeff is such a resilient person like he will fall down every single time and stand up in this situation and see it through no pun intended obviously but um <laughs> even though he's so resilient you see the toll that that takes on someone and how sad it is and just all of the health trials and tribulations I've like seen him go through for this and seeing really no support from the where it originated and stuff. Oh, it's crazy. It can't help but kind of light a fire under you. And there was a gray area time too where I, I would had still was still attending Dobrik events and stuff like that. And then it just got to a point where it was like I don't even though this is just transactional LA bullshit where I pop into a party now and again, I don't even want to do that because I don't ever want my best friend to feel like I don't 100% ride for him. Like, even when I was there at those things, I was talking to people and David's friends and shit like that, and they'd be like, we love Jeff. We miss him so much. We, th and I'm like. No, nah, dude. You, That's called the cash Kool-Aid. Yeah. And they're <laughs> sipping it because they're getting paid to sip it. For sure. And they're afraid that that teat is going to go away. For because sure. Because breaking news, no offense to any of you, I see you all out all the time. Mm -hmm. He is your lifeblood. He is your sole financial source. He is your sole personality source. Mm -hmm. He is the source for so much of you. 100%. But the reality is you are more than whatever the fuck you've given to David Dobrik. Yeah. Have integrity and some sort of self-worth. Okay? For sure. And I mean, maybe there's some real friendship in there. I, I guess I would hope if... I did some fuck shit like that that Amari and Ashley would still would, rock with me, I guess. But also, but also call you the fuck out. Like, like if, if I do that to somebody, okay, Dan, I put you at risk tomorrow, and for a bit, you lose a finger. I hope every person close to me is ripping me a new asshole. That's so true. For one, putting you in that position to That's begin so with. Two, putting you in that position without the proper accoutrements, a.k.a. <laughs> having an e e uh, emergency medical services if necessary, having, I don't know, fucking first aid kits, the whole fucking thing. That's the thing, 100%. It all just should have never happened. And Holy. that's one thing about me that I just, I can say for my own personal thing. If I ever put one of my friends in those positions, I would be fully indebted to them and so transparent about that on and off camera, no matter what I... I wouldn't just be kind of trying to make it go away. You know, like watching Jeff pay out of pocket for all this shit and worry oh about the future of his health Ugh. for the rest of his life is, like, fucked, you know? Well, he's buying a $10 million fucking house? Get a fucking grip. Do, yeah, do any of those, like the vlog squad, do they stand up to David or is everyone kind of just still like, kind of scared I don't of know what happens behind closed doors and I don't, you know, I, I've never personally witnessed a situation where someone would be there to do that. So mm -hmm. I really, I have no comment on that. Um, but everything I've said about it is 100% true. You know, when I, like, see all the people, it's like, oh, we miss Jeff. How's Jeff? Da, 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 da. And then I'm kind of just like. And last time I said that, um, that I had that interaction, um, I think I said it on Jeff FM. I was like, last night I was at a party and, you know, I had these interactions with these people. They came online and said, Tana's a liar. Tana's a liar. She lied. Da, 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 da. I actually haven't even, like, talked about that yet. Um and I was just like kind of beside myself because it's like, <laughs> yeah, because there's, what would I get out of lying about no, that? You know, they're saying you lied because they're all afraid of David. If like, but what the fuck? But what or I think afraid of being a seen dragged as double into agent, it, afraid of the situation, it? or they don't want to look like that type of person. Ugh. I guess you know. And I was just like. If I'm lying about something, at least I like I'm gonna make it fucking fun. I'm gonna say I was like at Disneyland with Drake. Like I have no need to lie about a vlog squad member interaction. There's just I've come too far in my career and my life to get anything out of that. So I was just kind of like, okay, okay, you know. Ooh, I get douche chills, man. It like really, <laughs> I it is. It, to, it, I have a real problem with people who I'm have face tuning every single one of these fucking photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Good I, no, you, we should. I genuinely have a problem with people who make so much money and they use other people as ways to generate that revenue and then they give nothing in return. Like, I'm a believer in you get back what you put out there. Mm. So, is times a coming? But, like, I will forever remember the first day I met David Dobrik. He came up to me. He and Jason were watching our show religiously, studying our studio. And I literally told him, you. 
you are not the star. Your friends are the fucking stars. You are nothing without your friends. <laughs> they are exactly what keeps you going. And that's why people tune in. Like, you yeah. are only as good as the people you have around you. And if you don't treat them right, you're fucked. I said that to him maybe in 2018 or something. Yeah. 29, I don't know. Uh, and clearly none of it resonated because he, it, it, there's abuse and then there's that. Like, yeah. brother, if you lost a finger, Dan, I'd be, I, by the way, I'm indebted to Dan even without him losing a limb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but if you were to lose a limb, kept this show afloat for thirteen years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thirteen just, years down. There you, yeah, he's thirteen. I've been doing this for sixteen. Well, it shows. I mean, I always yeah, say you, you are the greatest. No, not physically. <laughs> Hold the fucking phone. You are the greatest interviewer of our generation, <laughs> and I will say that always. I was gassing thank you to you. page like the whole way here. Um, thank you. Thank but you, thank you. I feel that one hundred percent. I think that you have to just be grateful to the people around you, and obviously, he gave them careers, and you could say that that's. The pay, I'm just saying when it comes down to, like, detrimental shit, you got to be there for someone. But I always say to Jeff, like, I never want to be, like, everything happens for a reason to someone when their eyes fucking out of the socket because that's, you know, that that doesn't help anyone sleep at night. But, I mean, I think Jeff is so funny and so talented. Fucking that hilarious. being able to leave that and be his own presence and not need anyone shows so much you know like you're so much more than so and so's friend but do you feel a responsibility because i know you've gone to where is it utah when he has to get surgeries Mm -hmm. do you feel a responsibility to be there for him in those situations nothing negative no 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 type of like oh i feel this pressure and need and responsibility to be there for him if anything i want to yeah and jeff is very much like no one pity me. I'm a fucking man. Her, gym, tan, laundry, fucking her. Like, like, he's, you know what I mean? Like, even if I'm like, oh, are you okay? Do you need anything? He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, dude, take some content. <laughs> Exploit me. Like, <laughs> like, just like, he's not like that at all. But we honestly, him and his friends, I don't give enough credit to all of the people around him are, it's, I feel like it's almost similar to me and my friends. Like, they're just amazing, hilarious people. And we have so much fun together. I think across like a lot of my social media career, this is one of the friend groups that I feel the realest and the closest and like with and actually just love being around so much. So, and we, I think we have so much, even though like we went to Utah and he had to get that surgery and he felt really bad. Like we all still, and obviously Jeff probably the least, but I'm saying we all still had a great time and made the most of it and had fun. And you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So it's never like a dark type of obligation. I genuinely like love being there for him and I know he'd do the same for me. So And you co host the podcast, correct? Yes, I do. And we have so much fucking fun doing that. Well, while cancelled was uh under construction, <laughs> um, I was missing it so much. And I just I went on Jeff FM one time randomly and it we were like, Wait, that was so fun, so amazing. People loved it. I kept doing it and it's just kinda like snowballed and now we are in the works of kind of doing, making our own show as well. Amazing. So it's it's just fun as fuck. Like, you know what I mean? I would do it for free, like forever. Okay, canceled gets canceled because why? Um, I see a head shake. You can be honest. It's not, it's not about honesty. It's about what I can and can't say. Um, are there legal disputes going on? I've only heard rumblings. There, nothing is going on now, and we are working with amazing people who are our, like, best friends, right-hand people, to create an awesome, fun environment. And <laughs> I'm really excited for the future of Cancel. So what's going to be different this time around? I mean, we never... One? Taking a break was like, we never wanted to do that. You know what I mean? So I'm so excited to be back podcasting again and I wish we had never stopped and stuff like that but this time around I think I mean we have full control and we are able to do it whatever however whenever we want I think that I'm at a point in my career where especially creative wise I don't really want or need people kind of telling me what to do or giving you know what I mean yeah giving me any type of I always appreciate healthy guidance, but it's like I know what I want when it comes to a show of mine or things like that. So, I mean, it's just everything we have always wanted it to be. And I, I, I'm i grateful for the first time around as well. I think we learned so much and we learned that we love this and that we never want to stop and how to podcast properly. And you know what I mean? How to interview a guest and 
all that type of stuff. And it's out of my house now, which has been so fun. Oh, that's great. Like getting to just walk upstairs and fucking talk my shit. And the people that are helping us with it are Jeff's people. Oh, sick. so I've worked with them for like so fucking long as is. And they already like know me like the back of their hand. You know what I mean? Whether it's camera angles or topics I want to talk about or what I'm going to want cut before I do like all that type of shit. So it's just it's a fully oiled machine now. And we are we've got great guests coming and we're so stoked. Let's honestly, go. Yeah. Is uh, Brooke going to be talking to your ex-boyfriend on this show? <sighs> She's not here, so let me just let me. I'll say my piece. We should like Facetime her. Uh, where, where is she? I honestly, he, Dan was like, we should invite them both on the show. I know. Oh, I yeah, really. I, I she's at some event today and doing shit, but I didn't even think about that. We should do something, all of us, I one of these that. days. Need, me a crossover episode. Or we something. absolutely do. You guys even come on canceled, and it'd be so fucking fun. You can ask we Dan would, anything. We would. Oh, that's that would be a fun like spill your guts or fill your guts type of vibe. About I this never show. talk a lot. I just know I'm gonna get myself in trouble if I start talking. Yeah, that's what you do. You just ask the hard hitting questions. You know, I, I I just found out that Brooke was dating Clinton Kane. I had no idea that's who the guy was. Yeah, and I can't wait for there to be a Netflix four part documentary about that shit. Ooh. Oh, I'm I'm I'm. <laughs> Ooh. Like, no comments. <laughs> what do you mean no comment? Make all the comments, please. No, I mean because I'm really close to the entire situation. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm one of the reasons why Brooke ended up in that relationship with Clinton Kane to begin with. Yeah. Uh, almost I mean, we like, all were rooting oh, yeah. for it in the beginning. I was like, I love Clinton's music. I still do to this day. Um, I think he's so talented. And we all were like, fuck, yeah, marry him. And then Literally. it was like, fuck, yeah, run. <laughs> Get away. And it, it, it flipped very, very quickly. I, I will say I've been in Los Angeles for seven years now maybe longer and i have never seen anything and i cannot <laughs> stress that enough when i say anything i've seen it all i have motherfucking seen it all you guys i have seen every person do the craziest shit the most hollywood shit the most illuminati shit the shadiest shit the most fucking <laughs> fucked up shit you and i can't wait to make a memoir about it all you know but that situation takes the Mm -hmm. The cake the hell happened? by far, and I, I, Brooke is, Brooke's not ready to talk about it, and it's her story for the most part. You know, I can I can say things I was a part of and I've seen, but that's her truth and her story, and obviously his too. But I don't think he would know truth if it hit him in the face. A hundred percent. But um, <laughs> and she's she still she still chats with him. You that's know? what's the most fucked up, yeah. and she won't stop. And like that's whatever. And I love Brooke. You know, I, I would <sighs> literally die for her. I love her more than anything in the world. She's my best friend. Um, but Brooke, just, it's it's like a funny bit to her, and I'm like, there is nothing funny about this. <laughs> Please, motherfucking block him, girl. <sighs> like it stresses me out like I, no other. But I, I feel like I gotta educate the, the class. In a nutshell, <laughs> allegedly, Clinton Kane, who you may know from TikTok. He wove together this entire narrative that he had lost his mother. Oh, yeah. He told us that on the show. This show. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of comments. Yeah. I mean, that's that's actually kind of... It's where it all started. Where it all started was the comments on his episode on the Zach Sang show, which are public comments that I did not write. Yep. Maybe it was just me on 100 different accounts. <laughs> um, no, but, Allegedly. Um, a thousand different accounts. Uh, no, no, no. He came on Zach Sang and was like... Well, my parents, my mom is dead. And then all the comments were like, that's weird because here's her Facebook page, like type shit, yeah. you know? And yeah. um, that's kind of. Allegedly, Clinton Kane has lied about his mom being dead, um, even though he's released numerous songs about it, an album about it. And then did you see. Oh, yeah, he wrote I, a hymn. Brooke, please don't fucking kill me, okay? They brought it up. <laughs> did you see he posted an Instagram post mm. recently? Um, where he was like, <laughs> and I can laugh because none of this shit is fucking okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're just a visitor here. You have, you're yeah, not really involved. If, if anything was actually fucked up, I wouldn't obviously be laughing. Um, but he posted an Instagram post where he was like, there's been a lot of speculation lately about, you know, my mother passing away. It wasn't my mother. It was, I was adopted at a young age and it was a person who was like my mother, my motherly figure who actually passed away. And that's my real truth. And But that's a lie too. 
That's a lie too. For fucking sure. Yeah, he wasn't. In my opinion. In my opinion. (laughs) In my opinion. Yeah, her opinion, allegedly opinions, all of it. Um, are you gonna cover that and cancel? I, you know me, I am like, especially because now they're kind of cool and they're chatting. But there was the four month period where I was watching Brooke. For 24 hours, like, you yeah, know what I mean? If I wasn't watching to. her, we took shifts. I remember you that. You know, me and BB and Natalie and everyone, like, and Lila and all of our fucking, we all took shifts on making sure this girl was okay, as anyone would need if they went through being in love with someone in that situation. Um, and so, obviously, you know me, I'm biting at the bit to be able to kind of have her talk about it, especially because I think she, you know, got the shit end of the stick there super fucking hard. And... It does suck that it sucks and it doesn't suck that canceled was gone during that period because I think Brooke and I both were super going through it and it probably would have been really unhinged and really mentally unhealthy for us to have a podcast during that time. So maybe it was a blessing in disguise. But there's a part of me because I always I am the type of bitch who just I want I, the truth always wins in my eyes and I always want to air some shit out when it's fucked up like that, especially to someone I love 10 times more than myself. There's this selfish part of me that wishes we had the podcast during the time where she was like ready to go, you know, pull she, the trigger on airing him out. And, and she hasn't yet, right? She has dropped certain things on different podcasts. I was actually just getting on her because um, we shot a pilot episode of Cancelled, right? And then we watched it back, and it was like Brooke was just being super elusive about everything, like not really saying anything. And I was like, girl, you are going on these random-ass podcasts calling him like a fucking cheater and this and that and this and that. So I was like, hey, let's give the people something. You know, if you, if you can do it there, come do it here type of thing. Um, she said certain things, um, but... I mean, I literally... I, I wish this was like Shane Dawson documentary era. You know, like I think it needs... Uh, there there needs to be a real expose here. And yeah. uh yeah. It's in it's, my opinion. Yeah, it's gonna come eventually. Mm. For sure. Just I mean uh, you know, also like the idea just whatever. Do you remember what Netflix series page am I thinking? No, this of? is in- inventing Anna. That's Oh, absolutely Anna Delvey, but the, no, it's like was it like the football player? Oh my god, you're talking about uh yeah, Anti yeah. Teo. Yes. Yes. And what what is that? They're I, I remember watching that and thinking like he was in like a relationship with a fake girl or catfish. something. Yeah, he got yeah. catfished real hard. I remember watching that and thinking to myself like this, this is happening in another <laughs> font in my real life before my eyes right now. You know, and it, I don't even know. Well, well I hope uh, he's okay. I hope he gets yeah. all whatever the help he needs. Yeah, help for is, sure. Uh, yeah. It's like. It's so funny because I like I'm saying all this now and like I just a part of me feels like he's gonna see this. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And it's like I wish so badly they would just not be in this trauma bond still chatting moment so that I could like never see him again and like really fucking say how I feel. You know what I mean? But there's a part of me I'm like, is she gonna fucking invite him to like the next soiree? (laughs) Would you want him on your podcast if he would come on? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I think that there will never be. I will never believe anything he says, and I think it will always be like a, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just, I'm actually, I haven't seen him since all of this has unfolded, and I am very excited for the first time I see him in person again, because I think I'm going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, the, it just is what it is, you know? I don't know. It's just like, I, I can't. I messaged him when Brooke was really at the height of her. Uh, uh, being upset about this whole situation. I was like, you sh- are, aren't you scared or something? And he was like, scared about what? And I was like, aren't you fucking scared? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying to you right now? Like, aren't, doesn't, doesn't this, it's, and I'm saying all of this right now in a very kind of lighthearted, like funny way. It's not. But I remember, um, you know, Alex Warren. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and yeah. I, I love Alex Warren. He is one of those people that I've, you know, worked with kind of transactionally. Like, we did a lot of vlogs and shit like that together and stuff. But throughout that, we did become pretty good friends. And we started to hang out kind of off camera and stuff. And I fucking love Alex Warren. I think he is a genius and a sweetheart. And he's super talented. And he kind of wanted to start to get into the music space. And both of his parents actually died. And he 
you could just tell how much he loved, I think he opened for Clinton at one point, how much he loved Clinton and was really sincerely inspired by Clinton's story to start making music about what he'd actually been through. And I remember there was a point where I was like with Alex and he was like just telling me something about like his parents dying and showing me the music he'd made about it. And it brought me to tears to think about the amount of people that this person has moved by such a false narrative and how many people who he has probably saved that would be so hurt to know. You you know. Mm, that's all I could think about. Yeah. That's literally on my face it. even think about it. Yeah, it. People who felt understood mm. probably at a moment where they needed to feel understood and couldn't find that sense of understanding anywhere else mm -hmm. finally felt understood. Yeah. And for that to all be built on a lie it's just dark. And for it to be taken away from them when they, the only reason they're feeling understood is because they lost somebody that matters to them. Mm -hmm. I have a same, one of my best friends would go with me to see his shows. Mm -hmm. She had lost her dad mm -hmm. in the last year or so and like felt such comfort Absolutely. from his music. Absolutely. And for all of that to just be yeah. bullshit. I can't imagine the like the heartbreak, the betrayal, that. and then I mean, obviously, you can say that, you know, even if it all is fake, like maybe those people really needed that, and it still helped them, and that's like beautiful, I guess. But it just doesn't sit right with me, I nah, guess. Nah, it doesn't at, at all. all. I just think it's a crazy fucking thing. If Brooke was to get back with him, would that ruin your friendship with Brooke? <laughs> um. Here he goes with the hard-hitting questions. I don't think, <laughs> I'll always, I, like, love Brooke so much, and she's seen me make so many toxic, awful decisions. I, there have been so many points where she was like, if you get back with Chris Miles for the 37th time, <laughs> I'm going to never talk to you again. So I think we've both felt that way about each other, and we ride for each other. I don't think, I, whenever you have those close friends that you lose to those awful relationships, I have always tried to be the type of friend that's like, yo, I'll be here when you come back. Mm -hmm. Like, type of thing. I don't. So I don't think that it's, it's not like I would cut her off or anything like that, but I think that even when she was with him the first time around, it would be like her running joke of like, I'm not allowed to do this. You know, I, I can't, we didn't see her a lot. So I think it would be like, kind of like that. But I think she is a very smart girl and I hope that she doesn't do that. I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that she's really excited about canceled and where her career path is going and all that type of shit. So I think that hopefully that outweighs what is a trauma bond, you know? And th that's the thing is I'm not, I don't ever want to sit here and be like a speaking on her behalf, but B acting like it's just like, Oh, she's so quirky for hitting him up. Because, you know, I, I've been in trauma-bonded relationships where it is like being addicted to heroin. Like, you can't get away from this person. And when the highs are so high and the lows are so low, especially in that situation, imagine the drastic nature of how high the highs are and how low the lows are. You become so addicted to that dopamine. You become so addicted to the highs of that person texting you or even just the peace of being on good terms with them because of how anxious it is when you're not because of how volatile and shit can be when it's not so I, I I if anything I just feel empathy for her and I think that's what fuels my almost I guess disdain towards him because it's like you've done this to someone I love yeah. you know 100% yeah you have a good relationship with Bryce Hall <laughs> I like that friendship I love that friendship I actually do Bryce is one of those people where it's like yes we make content but I actually I love to kick it with him off camera and we have as, as much as I hate to say it, we painstakingly have a lot in common, you know? <laughs> like um, what? I mean, we are both impulsive, wild, say what's on our mind, yeah. controversial, wild <laughs> people who love to have a good fucking time and sometimes piss everyone off <laughs> by doing it. And I think we both had stages of life where we really needed to grow, and that was kind of before the public eye, and we both were able to kind of cope with that and navigate that with humor and both kind of did grow and we just like doing a lot of the same shit like going to vegas or we, he has poker nights at his house and we have hella fun doing that and shit like i fucking i do love bryce he is something else he, he fucking is and he's <laughs> wild i mean oh crazy the shit that comes out of his mouth sometimes <laughs> definitely hanging out with him is like a couple hours of like bryce stop <laughs> like don't fucking say that you know what i mean but 
I love it. I do. I appreciate someone who's authentically themselves and wild, even if they are crazy over like a lot of it, you know? Yeah, he's fucking nuts. Every sure. time I see him, it's a journey and a half. Oh, for sure. For yeah. fucking sure. He's he's wild. Um, but he is a smart kid, you know, like when it comes to his business and his money and he knows how to when the camera comes on, like be Bryce Hall for the bag, you know, which I I do respect, you know. Um, for the bag, Dan, you hear that? <laughs> hey, Bryce has managed to stay relevant for a long time. A lot of those kids that blew up on TikTok, they've come and gone, and Bryce is still out there mm-hmm. making money. He's everywhere, so can't shit on for that. His next business venture, too, obviously I'm not going to be the one to, like, leak it, but it, I found out about it, like, the other day, and it's it's so on brand and fucking awesome, and, like, I was like, damn, great idea. You know what I mean? Like, good for you. This is, like, like he's smart with those type of things, you know, and – he will be like, yo, do this. Like, this is so smart. Like, get on this and, like, teach me things sometimes. And I'm like, whoa. I'm learning from Bryce all right now. This is scary. <laughs> but love him. I do. Yeah, he's a freak. <laughs> we like him. Love him. We do. Yeah. I I, once, I see him usually at your, your house or your old house. One of your old houses. Is he what? I used to see him at your old house or one of your old houses. Yeah. Like, I feel time. like if we, either one of us have, like, a party or even, like, a get-together, like, We'll both kind of be there, and our friends all get along and shit. You know what I mean? So it's fun. For Good sure. group. He's not like my everyday bestie, but it's just like someone in LA I actually like, which is good. Healthy. Yeah. Friends are nice. Friends are nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When when I make a friend in this industry, you know, like a fucking a fellow clouded TikTok fucking friend, <laughs> and I actually like them, like I love that. Like I I like cherish those friendships because it's like there's so many fucking people that it's like. Fake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Bryce Hall is anything but fake. Yeah. He is exactly who you see on camera off. 100%, which I just, those are the type of people that I get along with the most. I always say it's like, it's not, f- no, it, like no shade really to the people who are a completely different person online because if that's how they're building their business and whatever, but like I could never do that and I just, I fuck with the people who are kind of like that, you know? Do you feel like the podcasts have allowed people to better understand who you are and your motives? Yes. Which I love, I guess. I The long form and the conversation of it all. I've never, like, been the type of person who is vying to make people understand me. Like, I know that the 85% of people who just, like, see me online and aren't, like, that niche fan base who are watching things like this, like, getting to know me are just going to be, like, dumb, blonde, idiot, controversial bimbo. And I don't know. It doesn't really bother me. I think that it's a it's a slippery slope when you start living to prove who you are to everyone, mm. especially in the public eye and on camera. So I think I've always kind of been the type of person that's, like, if you get to know me, I am so much more than these one, like, sides that you see of me online, but I'm not, like, dying for people to, you know what I mean, know that about me. and. Shit. What, do you want, like, if, if you could share one thing about you that you think would be really important for somebody to understand when they're crafting their opinion of you, what should they know? That's a really great question. I guess, and it's so, like, fucking corny and stupid, but, like, I am a human being, just like the rest of everyone else. That you, and this goes for everyone online, you know what I mean? But, like, and I don't mean this in a condescending way, but... Grow up the way I did in the childhood that I lived in the, you know what I mean, in the hometown that I lived in with the financial whole situation, just everything. Live the life I live and put a camera on yourself and film every fucking moment of it and have millions of people before you know it speculating and commenting on your every single move overnight and see if you can perfectly navigate it. See if you can perfectly handle it. See if you can perfectly have no fucking mishaps and scandals and no trips and falls and, you know what I mean? And then talk to me, I guess, about that. You know what I mean? I think that people... That's not possible because you're just living life. Forget that I was just like 15, 16, not really raised with, you know what I mean, uh, guidelines or proper, just anything, proper morals, proper guidelines, proper tools that a lot of people at that age have to navigate life like a stable home or anything like that and you know what I mean is there a part of you that wishes you had those things um I think I struggled with that for a long time 
And there's always going to be those, like, moments, I guess, where you, like, see a person who grew up in the cookie-cutter golden retriever house, and you're like, damn, why couldn't that be me? Like, rats. But you wouldn't but be here if it was you. 100%. And I think I've worked through that so much that now I, like, really wouldn't change anything. And I love my life now. It Like, it took a long time to kind of get there, but I, I really wouldn't change anything. And I don't like to get caught up in, like, what things could have been because there's no point, you know? Do you feel like you still have a family? Well, Amari's family, my best friend Amari, yeah. um, they, her, like, it, adopted me pretty much. Like, when I was, like, 12 or 13 years old, like, they just, they were, like, my first introduction to, like, oh, wow, like, family is something you can fall back on no matter what. Mm. Oh, wow, like, traditions are awesome, and home-cooked meals are awesome, and holidays are awesome, and calling your mom is fucking awesome. And I think that because I wasn't innately born, and siblings are awesome, whole nine, but, like, because I wasn't innately born into that, it gave me such an appreciation for it. You know what I mean? Like, there will never be a moment when, like, I call Amari's mom, and she's like, my mom, you know, I'm like, hey, mom, like, what's up? Um... When I call her and I don't think in the back of my head, like, I'm so grateful for this. Or, like, we're going home for Easter. And it's, like, I'm so excited. And I that excitement is so fueled by being so grateful for it, you But know? do you wish you had those moments with your own family? Um, Even though I do believe you can choose family. Family is not yes. necessarily something that is blood. Um, I think that you have to find peace in knowing that maybe you never will. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I ever could have had those moments with my own family, if that makes sense. But you've tried, right? You've had your mom around at certain things. I, when I was younger, yes. I definitely tried for a long time, and it. I would just try and try and try and try and try, and every time I would end up crying or screaming or so sad, or and eventually you just realize that, and I, I learned this at a very young age, and maybe it is a dark thing to realize, but you learn that people can never be, like, what you necessarily want them to be. And that you're not, maybe you're not going to get out of a situation what you want. And you also can learn that everyone in this regard, that your parents are just people. And sometimes people can be super sick and mentally ill and not cut out for this shit and eventually kind of gain an empathy for that. And now it's... I don't ever, if anything, I would, I'm so grateful for what I have. Like, I wouldn't trade it. Like, I, the moments I have with Amari's family are the best fucking moments absolutely ever. So I, I would be sad now if I didn't have that, you know? What's the hardest part about being sexualized all the time? <laughs> um, great question. I, I mean, I, I grew up in Vegas. I grew up in a crazy stripper sex work oriented type of town so I think it opened my eyes to that being such a thing in the world at a young age that it kind of you know what I mean um and I can look back now too on just so much shit that happened when I was like just 18 19 in this industry and shit and this whole industry is so dark when it comes to the sexualization of women and how much harder you have to prove yourself as you know I'm not just an object and I'm not just this and that. But um now at least I I mean starting OnlyFans for me was like weirdly so empowering and like sick to me because I was like I'm gonna post this shit on my Instagram anyways and I'm gonna post all these things that I do and I'm a wild child especially. You know what I mean? I, I feel a lot more for women who do not do that at all. You know what I mean? Not that there's it should happen either way, but I'm saying women who are very reserved and modest and whatever, and men sexualize the shit out of them, and it's so gross and awful. But for me, I was like, people are going to sexualize me no matter what. So for me to build a multi, multi-million dollar business off of what people were going to do for free no matter what made me kind of like, fuck you to those people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was very stoked to flip the script. Well, that was a part of, like, what I was wondering is, like, are, are you... Have you always been a sexual person or do you feel like this is the box society put you in so make the most out of it? I think I kind of always have been really wild, which does come. And maybe looking back on like my youth and what maybe those it wasn't for the right reasons and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, but I still think I am a pretty wild, like fun, crazy, like kind of sexual person. You know what I mean? which obviously does put me in that box sometimes. But I guess I do just kind of have fun with it. But it is, 
It is interesting. I think now I can differentiate a lot of the right and wrong in that world, though, you know? And I look back at me younger and just so many, like, situations and shit like that where I'm just, like, I don't know, where I would want to go go back in time and just be more of a fucking dick about it and crazy and stuff. And I'm sure all women, really, in this industry feel that way. Like, certain times where they could have stood up for themselves more. Yeah. Hey, you know, hated certain situations and stuff, but have rich men ever offered you a lot of money to do stuff? For sure. Um <laughs> I haven't ever gone down that path. Like I always wanted to be the rich man. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing though. I love a good finesse. You know, you think I'm hot and you want to put me on your private jet, sure. I'm not gonna fuck you for money. I'm not gonna do any of mm. that crazy shit. But I have a lot of friends who do, and I'm always just like to each their own, I guess. You know, if you feel if you feel content with yourself and you don't feel like shit about doing that shit and you're having fun, then all the more power to you. But it is scary. I don't ever like to feel like I owe anyone anything, you know? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, I think I've just, like, always, for me, found a way for myself. And I've only really had myself to rely on. So I think that I would just, like, I would struggle in those situations, you know? And I see that the way those like rich men are with all those girls and the way they talk like so down to them and treat them like they're so stupid and just an object who's there. Like I would be like, bitch, whatever mm. you're paying me right now, I just made 20 minutes ago. No, literally. Like, so suck my dick. So somebody you would know? have to really offer you serious money. Even now, I mean, it's, you're, they're going, they're, ta- they're broaching a conversation like this is a tan emoji. Yeah. And I think that the, if anything, that does kind of weed me out of being a, a draft pick for a yeah. lot of those scenarios <laughs> because, you know. Yeah, but you're making, like, tens of millions of dollars already. Why do you need to do one 100%. thing with one person? I mean, and I still, I always say this online, though, you know, like, I, I'll I'll buy anything for myself, but if I, I it's always fun when someone else is swiping as well. <laughs> so, you know, there, I've been in situations with certain people who just want to impress me or do things or guys who are crazy and shit, and sometimes I'm down to, like, entertain it, but never in a <laughs> transactional sexual way. Yeah, that's yeah. just not how I am, which is kind of surprising, you know? I think I tried to have a sugar daddy a couple times, and then I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. You're the sugar daddy. For sure. Can I be kind of sh- fucking annoying, though, so maybe I need one. <laughs> I'd be your sugar baby. That's hot. Yeah. I'd be into that. Whatever you need. Only you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I do find that, I, I totally, I do find the whole thing interesting, right? This mm-hmm. idea that, like, power dynamics and money and then people feel power entitled dynamics. to things because you, you pose or post certain things on the internet is really grotesque and really disgusting, and uh, for sure, it's quite the world we live in. For sure, the power dynamics in this industry are just so crazy to me and dark. I think that that is like so much of the advice I give to like a lot of these new TikTokers. Because now, whenever I like meet these young TikTok girls, they're always very much like, "You raised me. I grew up on your videos. Da, da, da. Give me advice on how to navigate this." Even the people just blowing the fuck up, like right now, will be like, "How the fuck do I handle this and stuff?" And that's always definitely one of the facets of my advice: is know your worth and don't get caught up in something where you feel like you owe people anything. And the power dynamics in this industry are crazy, and don't ever make people let you feel like that, like you, like they own you. It's true. You know, because that's the worst feeling in the fucking world. Like, even just in my career, I can look back at times where I felt like someone owned me in any regard. I, like, I hate those, you know? And that's even now, you know, I'm like a pretty open fucking book. So if I ever can't talk about something, it's usually a legal reason or it's usually something like that, you know? And now I'm very careful to not get into those situations because that's the worst feeling in the world to me is feeling like you're suppressed. Does that fuel your want to create an agency that offers something better to For sure, especially models, artists? So my my agency, Tana's Angels, T A A, um is in partnership with Unruly Agency because I've known like it's un, it's all of Unruly's employees helping me do all of that type of stuff because I've the CEO of Unruly, my agency for OnlyFans, Tara is one of my best friends and I've known her for like 6 or 7 years and I've known her way before all of this. It's even like when she first came to me to sign, it was they were in the beginning stages of kind of becoming an agency and really making so much money. And I've just always had so much respect for her because she is the epitome of boss bitch. Like, she did this all herself. Like, she's a woman and everyone told her no and everyone told her she wouldn't make it. And she, you know what I mean? She did it all on her own. And I had so much 
respect for that. And even now seeing the way like grown men talk about her, they'll be like, she's such a G, she's such a boss. Like you can tell they're like threatened by her and shit like that. But she built this very ethical, mainly girls and gays ran agency that, and she's seen me get so fucked over so many times too, just in business situations that, you know what I mean? The way they do everything is so ethical and by the book and awesome and help all these creators grow and they're never going to push people to do shit that they feel uncomfortable doing and they're never, they're just here to kind of support and boost and help. And Tara and I sat down one day and I was like, I want to start helping people. You know what I mean? Like, and helping people with the creative of their careers and helping people not maybe make so many mistakes that I did and I finally feel like so ready to do that. You know what I mean? just after years and years of trials and tribulations and all the shit I've been through. So she helped me really, like, spearhead that, and that was the main motivator for kind of starting an agency. And it's been, like, two years now of us having clients and helping people. And Like, what are you looking for in a client? I So we have a, a couple people that do just that do things that are not behind a paywall platform and stuff like that. I am right now mainly helping people with that, like monetizing their online presence Got in it. a healthy, happy, good, growing way. Well, you know what I mean? So, I mean, for me, what I, I, I've, I have a soft spot for people, I think, when I see them blowing up super fast with not a lot of help because that's kind of how I felt for a long time. And I blew up in a time where there wasn't necessarily the proper tools and management for an influencer the way there are, there is now, you know? So I've always kind of had a soft spot for that, making sure that when someone's blowing up, people aren't taking advantage of them. Um, and now things are very different, and it's a lot easier for that not to happen and stuff like that, but it still happens. Oh, totally. There's still so many hungry tigers out oh there. God. And by the way, the OnlyFans world is a very dirty, disgusting world. There's a lot of management companies that pose as like real management companies that then try to convince their clients to do OnlyFans. And I've heard horror oh. stories from people who come over to us. I mean, horror stories where it's like scary and awful. And well, Dive into the queer OnlyFans world and you'll... Uh -huh. really be disgusted oh yeah i oh yeah and i've, I've heard some stories oh. in that realm as well and people are just like fucking nuts like obviously only fans can be a sexual platform but the business navigation behind that should never be anything but professional totally. and that's like very scary and stuff like that and i for me i guess to answer your question when i'm looking for people i am just looking for authentic awesome people who need help with whatever it is that they're doing and there's not really a category for me i think i just have to I have to feel like I can help you to take you on. Like, I never... Could Dan be successful at OnlyFans? You know? Me? It's yeah. never no. It's never no. Like, look <laughs> at him. He's slaying. We're blonde twins right now. We're just talking about it. Absolutely, but... Would you, would you, would you make, would you create content with him? Um... As in, like... <gasps> oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Is that saying. what they, you do? Do you, you do? No. What? You create content with other OnlyFans creators? I do like collaborational stuff. Did you do No Jumper, Adam Twenty Two? No, I don't. I don't. Their their show crazy. plug talk is it's a crazy fucking concept. I will say it is a highly monetizable concept as well. It's fucking something I think anyone would want to watch. Imagine right now I went on this podcast, and then after we all just had sex, it's it's <laughs> what, that's like on camera, yeah. on the same cameras, and you split up those files. Like that's nuts, you know. Um, I don't take things that far because I, because I think that um, it's my nightmare. While OnlyFans is an amazing source of revenue, I, where I'm at in my career, I don't, and it's it sucks that the industry does this, and I'm hoping we can continue to expand to where it's not a thing. But if you go too far, you could find yourself stuck. Yes. In people boxing you as only one thing, I guess. So while I do do it, and there is a lot of wild stuff on my OnlyFans, and I, you know, I'm crazy and fun. There, I'm not in my sex tape era. So yet. the answer is no, Dan. She's you not know. gonna create content. I'm not with gonna you. make a sex tape with you, Dan. Damn, but one day. I know you. I know you were looking for that today. Obviously, that's so. the reason I wanted you to come in. Yeah, 100. percent Come in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> where where do you draw the line on uh, OnlyFans? I I guess I don't make porn. Okay. You know, I'm not fucking on my OnlyFans. Um and I don't I don't do anything too rogue, you know. I don't you're not going to see inside my pussy. You're not going <laughs> to see. It. There's no way to say it. Okay, guys. There's no way to say it. Um 
Sorry, I said it's, ew. It's, it's, <laughs> that goes ew. I'm also very lucky as well that I have so many fans that kind of care what I have to say. Oh, as yeah. As well, that a lot of my OnlyFans is me talking to people. Like, in the messages and sending people videos of me smoking and what I'm doing or whatever. You know what I mean? I forget or, that you do OnlyFans, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's not necessarily a side hustle when it comes to the check that I'm receiving. But when it comes to the time I'm putting in, I guess I could say that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like... There's 50% of people who, when they're asking for a video in the shower, might want to see something hot and sexy, but the other 50% want to know the ingredients in the conditioner I'm using. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what shave cream I'm into. So a lot of this stuff, that I and I have a show on OnlyFans called Tanagon Wild where um, I vlog my weeks just like I do on YouTube, except it's like the crazier shit that I'm doing, you know? Uh -huh. So it's, it's kind of, I just took a way of kind of monetizing my content in a different way. I need to get on OnlyFans. I think so. Honestly, imagine like a Zach saying after dark. Mm. Like a show, but people come on and it's wild. and It's, it's wild and crazy. You know, you're I, a fun ass fucking, you're fun when you're lit too. I, so like, it could be, man, it could be fun. Imagine, I'm fuck, I'm so good you're, no, you're fun as fuck. Like you, you and Justin Horowitz are my people. Oh Shout my out God. Justin Horowitz. We've we talked about Zach auctioning off his V card. I'm still a virgin. Oh. I forget. Get that so much because we have some rogue ass conversations, you and I. Yeah, we do. We we. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are you waiting until marriage? No, no, no. But you. Eventually, are you going to do that? You think? Uh, no, but wait till I'm mar married. Or event or no, sex? eventually, are you going to have sex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also, I, I think you know depends on how you define virgin, which I'm interested mm. in your definition of virgin. Is it? Is it? I actually, I have this friend. Um. Mitchell Eason, he was just on Perfect Match on Netflix. And I've known him for a really long time. Like, not a really long time, but L.A. long time, you know, a couple of years. And um, he's wild and crazy. And he's always kind of talking about crazy encounters he has with people and whatever. And I just found out when he was on Perfect Match that he was a virgin. And I was like... Oh. No, you're not. Like, is this just a, a lie and a bit for like? <laughs> is it, are you Clinton caning us right now? <laughs> no, uh, like, you would see that goes back to definition of a virgin. Like, yeah, you know, I suck dick, still yeah. a virgin. And we, yeah, we were on this fucking um, flight back from Miami, and I was sitting next to him, and like 20 minutes in, we're like up in the air, the drink carts are coming by, and I'm like, so do you do, do people suck your dick? Like, I just had to know, you know what I mean? And I guess he does some stuff, but then hasn't fully penetration. Yeah, hasn't. Yes, penetrated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess that opened my eyes to that whole side of virginity. Yeah, because what everybody has their own definition of it, technically. Yeah. And you could consider me not a virgin because somebody's fucked my face. Yeah. Okay. Sle I, please, someone clip that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. No, um, but I, sorry, Amazon. I love um, it. I hope it goes viral. But, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> the what? Nothing. We're talking. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't just don't don't don't, don't I, distract I me. I apologize. Keep going. <laughs> no. So I uh, technically am a virgin. Yeah. So, yes. Um. What has made you refrain from honestly hitting the home run? Uh, honestly, like I, I think if you go back like long time, I was socially stunted because I've been working for a long time for mm -hmm. for sixteen years. So like mm -hmm. high school, college, whatever. Like my time was just taken up doing other things and. I had friends, but, like, my, my friends were also working, so we mm. all kind of had our own thing going on yeah. pretty consistently. Yeah. That being said, um, I just I, I just never got around to it, God's truth, and I never formed a real long-term relationship with anybody yeah. that was romantic in nature, so it just never came around. And now I'm at a place where I still haven't really formed a long-term romantic relationship mm. with anybody. Um, I don't really want to do, like, one-night stand stuff. Yeah. And... I'm just being honest. Like, I, I mean, it, it's a very, I think, and this is where I, I get really sad sometimes, is that I do feel like I waited a little bit too long to, like, go and get out there and, like, really meet people because I'm at a place right now in my life where if I meet somebody or if I find something that I like, like say I go out to a bar. Like, last night yeah. I went out to a bar. And this kid who had been sliding my DMs constantly is out there. And yeah. we're talking, hitting it off, finally. Yeah. And then, like, you know... I hear him talking to his friend and like, like 
people are getting to know me not because they want to get to know me, but because oh, like yeah. they've seen me on the internet or oh, they've yeah. watched our show or oh, whatever. Yeah. So like I'll overhear them like talking to their friend, being like, oh, "My God, do you know who that is? That's fucking Zach Zag. Yeah, he's fucking into me, and that ruins it. And then I run away, and then Absolutely. I leave. Absolutely, you know, As you, for the hills, bitch. Yeah. Fucking Usain Bolt, run away from uh, that shit. It's fast I as mean, fun. I don't think you should feel sad. I, and obviously, I don't think you should feel sad. That doesn't ever fucking help anyone not feel sad. <laughs> but I mean. Fuck the the past in that regard. Like, you can't ever be caught up on what you didn't do. And don't let that stop you from the future either. Like, the time is now, you know? Don't think it's then. Like, you know what I mean? Don't, you eventually will do it, and it will be the right time, and everything will happen for a reason. And I hate knowing you feel sad about that because you're so awesome. And that. But you are so right. You deserve someone who is with you and loves you completely for the right reasons. And it... This city and this industry is so hard to find that in. Like, wondering, you know, would you be with me if you just met me and you knew nothing about me or if I it didn't benefit you in some way to say you were with me and stuff like that. And I wouldn't want you to finally do that with someone with those intentions because that's ass uh, for sure. Yeah. But I think that let's let's start looking in all the different places, you know? Maybe it's not a dating app. Maybe it's not the bar. Maybe we need to go to church home on Wednesdays um, and find a man who loves God or something. <laughs> but I think eventually you're gonna you're gonna fucking find someone and it's gonna be awesome. Fuck yeah. I think like doctors, I think about like things that like I just wanna meet somebody who has no preconceived idea of who I am mm. or like as seen like I just Adore like me, to, if you will. Yeah, I would like to like have a fresh start with somebody. Yeah. That like is like a like we start at ground zero and then we build and that would be really sick. Absolutely, and I think you will find that as time comes and just maybe be conscious of where you're looking for that and hopefully you find that fucking person. But it, it is annoying, and I understand that completely. Thanks you know. for understanding. You do get it. But, um, Are you happy? Are you in a relationship right now? No. I am newly single, oh. and it's a thrive. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I feel like I'm meant to be single this year or, like, right now in life, and I'll probably be in a relationship in three weeks, but... Um, <laughs> I, I'm just. What, why? What motivates you to get into relationships? Like, what is the? Have you? Is there like a common denominator in, uh, that's a reasoning be between all of them? Oh my god, I don't know. I feel like I trip and fall into relationships. Brooke and I were talking about this on the. We just filmed another episode of Cancel, and we were talking about this where I'll have the fuck buddy, and then all of a sudden the fuck buddies we're cooking breakfast and then they're, they're coming out with the friends. And then before I know what I'm dating them and I'm trying really hard to break those patterns, you know, of falling into relationships so easily. But I think a lot of it is, is I just really love love. I really love being in love. I love the fun newness, the exciting part of dating someone and sharing life. And I love that. I, I love feeling like someone understands you and, makes things better and you know someone who makes grocery shopping more fun and shit like that and i just i always have and i fall i fall victim to that w but what happened to the previous guy i thought i heard on jeff fm that you're in a happy relationship uh, yes it honestly was i think to date my least toxic most like happy fun awesome little relation relationship situation um and he is an amazing guy, um, but he doesn't live here. He lives in Vegas, where I'm from. Mm. And long distance is not for me mm. at all. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, like it's not that far. I, and that's what everyone would say to me, and I I agree. It's not New York City. It's not that far. But like we're not. And he couldn't come out here a lot as well. So it was kind of like that. I don't. I think he has a, a lot of things he has to do, life to live, things to do out there. And um, I'm just, the through the phone shit is really not for me. And you have to be really good at your phone. And I'm already not that good. And then he was worse. And it was like, I, I remember towards the end, I was like, listen, I adore you, but I have better text message conversations with my accountant. Like when I see you in person, it's up and it's awesome. But if that's once a month for me, it can't work. it's, yeah, it just, it, it can't work. And I've never had a breakup like that, though. It was definitely a bucket list thing for me. I feel like our breakup was like we were ordering Starbucks to each other. Like, we were, like, straight up, like, laughing on the phone. Like, we both just kind of knew, like, if this is meant to be, it will be. And I really care about you, and I really care about you. But it was also, we were, like, four months in. And I was like, listen, like, 
I feel like if I'm going to fall in love with you at this rate, it would take me like two years because of how little I see you and the lack of the connection we have in person coming through on the phone, you know? So Oof. it just, and I, I think that for a while I was the type of person that felt like I couldn't get out of a house until it was burning down. And maybe that was the way I was like raised or the way just innately in me, I would stay in things longer until it was like, it forced me out, you know? And I think now I've become a lot better at being like, Hey, like, yeah, it might be embarrassing for me to be like, I'm going to have your relationship. And then three weeks later, I'm single, like so on brand for me, but it's, I'd rather like bite that bullet than stay in something that I feel like isn't going to work. Totally. You know, healthier. Yeah. By, by the way, canceled is coming back. We're going to put a link in the description below. You can also check Woo-hoo! out Tana on Jeff FM. What are you thinking? Any thoughts on Jake Paul losing? That boxing <laughs> match? Um, we were in Cabo and it's funny now because I wasn't in a place for a really long time. Like when I, because obviously like it's one thing, he's an amazing entertainer and what mm-hmm. he does. Right. But there were points in life where I was so heartbroken. And when the fight comes around, everyone's watching it. Like you're not making other plans with your friends nope. on the fight night. Nope. You've got to just... It, Except that that's what everyone's going to do and everyone's going to talk about. And it's so funny because I think my, we were all watching in Cabo and I'm like rooting. I'm like, when, like, I'm in a good place. I wanted to like watch it. You know what I mean? And when he lost, I think my only thought was like, where was this when I needed it? (laughs) Where was this when I was so heartbroken and would have been like living for it? You know what I mean? Um, but no, it's, I think, I think he'll come back and it's all a part of that. And it's, he's crushing it win or lose, you know, you were actually into Jake. I thought that whole thing was fake. I, well, I think that everything we did like content wise kind of was, you know, it was yeah. like for the cameras and stuff. But when you spend a lot of time, like doing all that type of shit with someone, if you care about them, it can become, Great and feels. I think that. You know, I, I'll talk about this one day at, like, length in a book and shit like this. but And not just with Jake. I mean this with, like, every public relationship. When people, when hundreds of thousands of people are chipping you and people are obsessed with your relationship and living for it and you are kind of playing up shit for the cameras and stuff, it fucks with your psyche so much of, like, what's real and what isn't and... You know, and I can't speak for him, and I think he was pro- a lot better at navigating that than me, but I think that it does, like, mess with your head towards, even just for me after that, like, relationships and looking at them and stuff like that, it, it definitely, like, fucks with your head a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you still love him? Yeah. Um, I No. I mean, I have, like, a lot of care for him, and I think at one point I really thought I, like, was super in love with him and stuff like that, but now it's just, like, it's been a long time, you know? Like, I've been in love since and shit like that. So. How many times since? Um, Probably, like, twice. Maybe, like, three times. I don't know. It gets a little gray there, me and all my fucking relationships. <laughs> Does, um, like, is it real love if it's able to just be disposed like that? I, you know what I think it is? I think that th- things are chapters of life. Like... And there are certain people that I think I I gave a little part of my heart to, whether it was Jake or whether it was Chris Miles or whether it was Maud's son or whoever. There are people that I've dated or Bella, you know, or I, I gave them a piece of me and a piece of my heart and a certain chapter of my life. And at that point, I was all in to that. You know what I mean? And... um but I don't think everything is meant to be forever, I guess. I think eventually, hopefully, you find your forever, right? Mm. Um, but especially when you're young and you're in your 20s and you're dating, that's kind of what a lot of those relationships are. And I, I maybe have had more than others, so take it with a grain of salt. But, I mean, yeah, I, I look at everything, any love I felt for people as little chapters that kind of shaped me and what's meant to be will be, you know? How will you know you have it and it's right? Uh, For me, when it comes to, like, love, I feel like you just know. If you have to question, is this right? Yeah, it's not right. It's not. You know what I mean? It's not. And maybe you overlook a lot of shit for that feeling. And then that's where, like, love and practicality probably have trouble holding hands. And maybe that's what a perfect relationship is that I hope I find one day where it's healthy, non-toxic, 
mutually reciprocated love. Mutually reciprocated. You know. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Which is hard to find in these streets. Oh, usually I'm just giving. Yeah. For, oh, for all, sure. All for I do is sure. give. You know what I, t- I take? Yeah. Addicted to the fans. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Dead ass. And that's, but sometimes <laughs> those moments are just as valuable. Loving someone so much who couldn't give oh, a yeah. shit if you lived or died. I love it. Like, I love being in love with someone who's incredibly selfish. Yeah. So it's, and sometimes those moments teach you just as much as mutual love, you know? Oh. God. That was like, I felt like I was on my Gandhi shit right there. I didn't mean it like that. No, you know, this I, is sober Tana is like seeing through fucking walls. Yeah, it's, you're, it's you're, scary. You're sharp. <laughs> it's crazy, actually. I love seeing through walls. I'm going to take that. You're I'm like. I'm going to take that and run home with that. You're on it. <laughs> Sometimes, I guess. But then I'm like disassociating and looking through you at the wall. That's. <laughs> What's it Depends like? Depends on the moment. I have that power. I took Adderall today, so maybe I'm just Oh, going shit. On. Are what you, you guys medicated? Uh, I mean, it's America. <laughs> New yeah, year right? 2023. The answer is yes. Dude, my ADHD is so, it controls my fucking life. I swear to God. It's like I have the worst ADHD ever. And I, I, I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever taken Adderall. Oh yeah. I take or. it every day. Okay. Yeah. Like you, I love it, but obviously it has its downsides, you know, mm-hmm. like the come down feeling of it sucks and you kind of feel like a little drone robot sometimes and no appetite and all the fucking downsides. But when I take it, it's so crazy. I'm like, Wow. This is, like, what my brain is supposed to yeah, do. Th- this is the potential that I have yeah, within me. Too fucking bad it can't just do that on its own. You know what I mean? And that's okay. Yeah. It is okay. We're all we're all got something going on up here. Chemicals are they're never balanced. But therapy is for everybody. Absolutely. And this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Uh, by the way, really, listen to both Tana's podcasts. We're going to put a link in the description below. Uh, what are you thinking? I think we covered a lot here, guys. Did we cover enough, though? Like, I always feel like you fucking come on and there's, like, a bunch of drama that I didn't get to. Like, She's staying out of the drama these days. I know. I am, for the most part, staying out of the drama. I mean, we went in today. I'm excited to see if everything gets left in. Oh, yeah. I, I hope you leave everything in. There was a, there, there was a couple things that we kind of chatted about, especially oh, yeah. the Dobrik-Jeff thing and the Clinton thing that I don't really, I haven't talked about like that. Could yeah. you retire today if you wanted to and live happily ever after? Um, I think with the way that I, the lifestyle I like to live, no, I don't necessarily think so. I think I would have to be like on some Jeff Bezos shit, not literally, but like, you know what I mean? To continue to live the lifestyle I want to live. But I also don't think I'll ever retire. I'm like a crazy working fucking mind. You know what I mean? Like I, I like love that feeling of putting your all into everything and reaping the benefits of it and shit. So I think, I don't know if I'll always be doing this, but I think. I'll always be doing something. So does it make spending $30,000 on clothes and then showing it off on YouTube e- that much easier? Absolutely. It really going? does. That was my tax write-off video of the year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, you need to write off way more in taxes. Than oh, for sure. That. Yeah. Shout out Kathy, my bookkeeper. <laughs> She's such a fucking slay. <laughs> Do you like look at your bank account and go, fuck yeah, I did that? Um, I'm actually really weird about that. I don't like to look for both reasons. Like, I don't ever want to look and feel so comfortable that it doesn't motivate me. And I don't ever want to look and feel like, God, I just want to make more. Like, type of thing. Obviously, I know where I'm at and I have to know a lot of the financial things that I have to know. But I am, me and Kathy, we go back and forth. I'm like, tell me what I need to know. Tell me what I need to do. You know what I mean? Give me advice. If I'm spending too much on something, tell me to stop. If you think I should invest more in something, to, you know? And I, I like to listen. And I've definitely made a lot of crazy financial mistakes like in the past and had a lot of shit happen that now I'm in a good place. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Tannabis is on the rise. I'm hopefully. We'll see. I'm ready. I smoke a lot of weed. I'll smoke your weed. Oh my, I can't wait to send you the PR package. I'm so excited. You're on the list, bitch. I'm sending it right here to Amazon Studios too, getting everybody high. (laughs) Fuck. This is why I'm never going to get a brand deal. (laughs) Tana Mojo. You're incredible. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. I could talk to you for hours on or off camera, the both of you. You're really incredibly special and one of a kind. Come back whenever the fuck you want. And uh, listen to Cancel. Listen to Jeff FM. Link in the description below. Tana, you're amazing. I'll probably see you tonight somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.